Okay, muting all. Okay, so let's start off. So currently we have this activity called a job and career guidance from the hacktivist. So I'm your, uh, you know, uh, activists are the sponsors for the event today. And I'm your speaker, I'm Emmanuel. I have four and a half years experience in the industry. I have worked in various fields from, I started my career as an IT tech support guy. From there, I've evolved into a cybersecurity professional over the period of time working in VAPT, uh, risk and compliance audits. And uh, I have also worked with the various assessments, something like a risk assessment and all those activities over the period. So uh, currently, if you see on the screen, uh, today we have a major crisis going around and everybody are concerned about getting jobs. If they have skills, but not they're getting the right job profile and other things they're not able to find the suitable uh, solution for it so uh, for these reasons we are trying to fire, showcase you uh, there are a couple of places and uh, activities that is going on where you can still find a suitable job it's not like everywhere the doors are shut there are ways that you can still work and find a job profile so that is the reason why we are conducting the activity as of now so uh, taking further this will overall we will try to help you out in finding out uh, where is the area that you lack or what is the things that you need to focus and what are the common mistakes that happens in clearing an interview i know that there would be a time in uh, everybody would have gone through a phase where they're applying for too many interviews too many job profiles and they're not getting enough responses and they might be worried about how the things will be going on further what would be happening if they're not able to uh, you know clear the interview or if they're not able to clear the interview what about the next interview are they able to you know pick it up from there onwards or do they have a proper profile that is suitable for them in once they get into that role all these concerns and confusions you might have and this is the right platform to ask those questions and uh, let us know if you have any doubts in the end of the session so that we can help you out in you know resolving those issues and again let me tell you this is we are doing as a community so here it's about a concept we call as a help one another and grow together. So what happens is we may have a lot of students trained around the globe for us and uh, we have a lot of connections with the industry people. So in case if you have any job opportunities in your company, you could let us know. And through Hacktivist, we will uh, try to know. What... <coughs> is somebody unmuted? One second. So, okay, uh, so we are, we are getting some requests that there are a couple of people who want to join uh, for two to three minutes. If you don't mind, I thought of waiting, but yeah, I think we have almost everybody will get going so that I don't want to you know, put you on hold. Uh, so we'll go slowly so, till, so that everybody could join on the session. So going up with the next thing. Okay, what are the contents that we have in store today so that we are delivering you? Uh, it is about the introduction, about uh, what we are, who we are, and why we are doing this, and about the current crisis that we are going through. And apart from that also, how about the jobs in information and cybersecurity, and how about the resume writing skills that you require or where you lack? We see that most of the issues are from these areas. So there are like only four sections, and we have some in-depth content based on our analysis that we have made. And starting off with who are hacktivists and uh, why are we conducting this program and who is it for? To start off with, Hacktivist is a training providing company. We provide trainings in various uh, domains, various specifics of information and cybersecurity. We have a dedicated course and trainers uh, in such a way that you know you will have a suitable trainer at your time and convenience so that you can get the activity done. And also, we do the community work. We do provide you know soft skills training and all those things for free of cost for those for our uh, you know, uh, participants who ever join our course and everything. So why we are conducting this program today? Why not earlier? So this program is conducted today because of the job crisis that is going around. So if you understand, uh, we had news that probably in future there would be a recession, particularly in 2020, it was most expected. Uh, sorry for this. have not shared anybody's okay so uh, 
looking at the scenario right now, we have a lot of content uh, and a lot of job crisis going around. But due to this COVID-19 situation, the crisis has increased uh, for a lot much faster than what we have expected. So sometimes what happens is like uh, in a situation like this, uh, there are job layoffs, pay cuts that is happening. And there is also promotions are on stop. You are not able to switch or you're not able to have a career change or not able to switch your profession. So uh, there are a lot of concerns that people are getting around. People are getting panicked. People are losing their jobs. People don't know what to do next, where to land in. And for a fresher, for example, we don't know what is happening around. Like uh, he doesn't know where to land and whether there is a good opportunity for him or not. So that's the reason. And uh, this is how we are trying to find out the information as of now. Okay. Okay, I have requested permission to record the session. I think we have provided the permission. Sorry for that. Uh, please let me know if anybody has a problem with recording the session so that I can uh, allow the recording. Okay. Uh, hello? Hello. Yes, yes Mena, who this is? Yeah, we're getting the, this uh, fragment. Like, please request recording permission from the meeting host. Okay. Let me pause the screen for a minute and let me know the number of requests that I'm getting. So, because I'm in a full screen mode, I'm not able to see those requests. Uh, okay. I'm checking the meeting controls. Okay, uh, sorry for this inconvenience. I think that uh, we have a, a you know, strict policy on this recording from the other end. What we'll do is we'll record a session from our end and we will post this video for you and we'll provide a URL link at the end of the session. Hope that would uh, you know, uh, probably uh, resolve your concerns. So we will record the session and we will update you to the slides and everything so you can go through it. That would be much easier for everybody, I guess. So we can concentrate more on the activity that we're performing. Thank you very much, people, for letting me know this issue. We'll get back to you on that once we do the session completely. Okay, so now who, who is it for uh, this session? Now, the third, our third thing we are trying to explain. So this session is for not only for the trained professionals in the industry, but also experienced people and also the freshers who are trying to get into the cybersecurity space. So uh, we look at things like a fresher, we look at things like an experienced, and also there is the in-between gap where are people working in a different background, but they want to get into cybersecurity. So uh, you might be thinking like, okay, there are a lot of industry, a lot of jobs, why I'm emphasizing on cybersecurity or information security as a part of it. We'll get to that part next, but this is for both freshers, experienced and also experienced people who are not into cybersecurity yet, but they are looking for a career change or a switch. Okay, next go for the next activity which is about current job crisis so this is a recent one i took from economic times and if you see this is happening much faster than what i've seen this is about seven days earlier and also indian government also has put a uh, hold on uh, where we are uh, actually how the job growth is going on and uh, what are things that is happening uh, but even then they're restricting the job cuts they're saying don't lay off but companies cannot survive if they keep providing the uh, you know salaries and everything and they don't have enough revenue to continue they have to go bankrupt so there are situations like that they have exceptions uh, even though they're trying to do pay cuts when i say pay cuts it might be paying 50 percent of the salary or the basic pay and allowing employees to continue and still surviving with their jobs so this is one of the scenarios with the pay cuts uh, so job pay cuts are much better than job losses at least they would have a job in hand what are the impact that you may face in future? Okay, for example, now we have a COVID-19 crisis, we have a recession, and there are a lot of jobs that is laid off and pay cuts have happened. The future is about getting your hikes, bonus, and promotion, whether you are able to switch your job into a next company or not, or next change your career or not. Is that possible? 
Okay, these are the questions and concerns that we have is with respect to current job crisis and which industries are affected, which are growing. So the best example is Zoom has grown over 100% to 200% during this crisis. So uh, they're able to have a lot more of information uh, in terms of growth because of this VPN companies, those companies who used to have VPN access and other activities, they have also grown much faster in terms of work from home scenarios as such cloud computing so people have online joining a work from home they're providing virtual desktop solutions so if you say amazon virtual desktop citrix virtual desktop so these companies also massively grown because uh, of these requirements that has been come up with this scenario so there are some laws because they are not able to work in the office and not able to provide 100 percent but there is also a profitable products that is there in the market as of now even in this scenario so we have to see both pros and cons of this and try to land in a company where we might be more uh, which the growth is much more faster and uh, uh, where they are ready to pay because the product is very good and it is helpful in these kind of scenarios so uh, the, the reason i'm bringing this topic is that even though it is affecting a lot but it's not affecting overall landscape it's not affected all on all the companies there's still the you know uh, probable uh, solution in the market so uh, so i think uh, this will explain why uh, you know we are trying to say okay uh, where are uh, we where we are currently what is happening right now what may happen in future so currently we are in the crisis in future after the lockdown is removed probably our you know jobs would continue as it is now and in future it might be in an area where we have not expected other products that we know we have not known so far which have helped in this crisis situation have grown and you know grown, growth has been much more than what we have expected so they would have a lot of requirement in companies such such because the best example is like uh, uh, i can say about uh, zoom itself uh, the reason i'm taking up zoom is because it's because of a lot of controversies going on about the zoom security the product has a large number of uh, uh, you know users now up to uh, 20 million more than that they have increased rapidly now the issues are with respect to the vulnerabilities that they're existing in that how security is to use but yeah because of the growth that they had fastly where they were not able to uh, get everything that's one of the things uh, i have enabled the screen sharing has anybody uh, got issue with the screen sharing i hope everybody able to see right dronacharya are you able to see the screen now okay Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'll continue. So uh, this is a news from uh, April 7, 2020 uh, that was taken from the Economic Times. So this is just a screenshot that I've added, but for more information, you can see, understand how's the landscape currently. Now, going for why we are talking about cybersecurity. Uh, so wh wh why we are picking cybersecurity as of today? So this was one of the articles that was released about the top 20 future jobs in India in 2025. Similarly, even LinkedIn has also released what is the future jobs of top 10 to top 20 jobs uh, in the world in that cybersecurity stands one of the most seeked job opportunities. So if you see in India alone, uh, we have a 12 times growth and there is 1 million cybersecurity professionals requirement by 2020 that was expected. And it is expected to grow more than this because of uh, there are the attacks that has been happening. So if you see the latest news that I seen today and I was not able to update it because the slide was prepared much longer and uh, uh, just before, before I said I have updated all these things. Today's news, what I heard was there's a maze ransomware you know, that was impacting or attacking on the a cognizant infrastructure so they had a cognizant uh, cognizant they found a maze ransomware attack today so the news was all over and i seen that okay i think the attacks in these kind of scenarios is very much sad to hear because people are working from work from home they're working uh, from various locations and uh, they don't have that much resources to work on but they're still they are trying to continue and these times uh, looking after a ransomware attack it's very hard to uh, troubleshoot or overcome that situation but yeah uh, because of having a cyber security professionals, these companies are still able to operate and overcome it. So uh, these are the companies or these are situations where the, depending on the number of criminals or number of activities or number of cyber crimes, the demand for a cyber security professional will also grow. So they are in parallel. If you see earlier and compare it to the today's scenario, once upon a time, there was one or two security professionals or requirements that I used to see like five to six years ago in Naukri. If you see, there are so much of requirement in terms of a security analyst, a compliance requirements, uh, you know, internal auditor or an external auditor, uh, forensic investigators, 
and all those things so there are job requirements have boomed and this is an industry that you can always try and focus on because this gives you a lot of opportunity to learn so if you are a person who is very technical who's who's keen to learn more who tries to you know get into the cyber field and you know analyze all this how the cyber activity goes on we are very much interested and this is the right field for you and there is a lot of opportunity and potential if you have the right set of skills to evolve so uh, what are the five different uh, industries we can consider where cyber security professionals are required so this is one of the confusions uh, you might have okay uh, cyber security professionals are required only in it companies or it might be only in the companies like in Wipro, Infosys, uh, TCS, something like that. But that's not entirely true. That's the reason we have classified there are five really different industries. And this is one of the uh, links that I have referred from, I have attached a link in the top itself so that you can easily refer back. So in five different industries, one is a tech company. In tech companies, I have segregated them into product line, service line, and consulting or advisory. So in product line, what happens is that the company has its own products, like Google. It's a Google has its own product, it's having Android, and Microsoft has its own product like Windows. So product-based companies. Next, you have something like a service-based companies. If you take uh, Wipro, HCL, TCS, Tech Mahindra, they provide a lot of services. It might be IT support services or application development and support services. So these people provide services in terms of change management, incident management, monitoring, uh, you know, IT help desk, all these activities. And India is one of the center hub of the world because if you see all the US, UK projects, most of them land in India because of the cost and the skilled professionals that we have here. So that's a service line. And consulting or advisory. When I say consulting or advisory, it might be consulting companies who provide a VAPD services, uh, for forensic services, or even uh, risk and compliance services. And advisory companies such as e, uh, Big Four, we can say that like EY, Deloitte, PwC, uh, KPMG. Apart from that, we have other companies like Grant Thornton, uh, ProTVT, Provise. So uh, we have a lot of other companies also who provide consulting and advisory services in terms of information and cybersecurity. The second thing is government. So this is across the world. It's, it's a global thing. A every country has its own government divisions or subdivisions, I can say, or things. So in India also, we have requirements in police department, the DRDO, that is Defense De Development Activities in Bharat Earth Movers Heavy uh, Electricals Limited, BHEL, HAL, uh, Industrial Aeronautics Limited, BEL, Bharat Electronics Limited. Apart from this, you have different other areas of government where you still require cybersecurity professionals and there have been a lot of job postings for it and requirements were coming up. So if you're a person who thinks like, you know, I want to get into government job, I need a government job, but I am, I like to work in cybersecurity. The, you can go into this field as well. You can try for the government jobs also if you have the right set of skills. And there's a job requirement wholly for that. Well, that's one of the things. The third thing is banking and finance. So if you know these banks and finance are the most targeted uh, spots for the attacks uh, because they can blackmail them using or, uh, uh, or using a ransomware, they can control their entire data and blackmail the uh, with some ransom for it, or they can also target for card data. It might be credit card or debit card data, which they can target to steal. So banking and finance companies, so you might thinking it's both the same. The finance companies is a quiet set of different companies. Example, uh, Sriram Chit Funds, Muthut Finance, uh, and other bigger uh, finance industries like small, uh, small finance banks. And there is something called non-banking financial corporations. It's like a Daimler if you buy a car, right? You have something called Daimler Finance uh, that is given for the Daimler trucks and Daimler uh, cars. If you buy a car from Nissan or Renault, they have their own finance providing companies. Similarly, they, every company or bigger organizations like uh, Mitsubishi had its own finance in uh, Japan and other things. So here also we have uh, Bajaj also have Bajaj Kinso. It's a finance thing. So for the bikes and everything that they offer. So these finance companies also require cybersecurity professionals for keeping up their industry up and running without getting them uh, attacked or compromised. So apart from that, we have retail and marketing uh, manufacturing industries. This is like our Flipkart, Amazon, Walmart. Uh, it might be your, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we have like the Big Bazaar, Reliance Retail. So all these things and Shop or Stop, they're all retail. And there are also manufacturing industries like people who manufacture products uh, in terms of like your Audi, Volvo, Mercedes-Benz. All these are manufacturing companies. They manufacture cars uh, and different uh, requirements for it. 
So based on this, it, it, it usually change. So apart from this, now other thing you have is the media and gaming. So this is the hot spot or the sweet spot in current situation and current trend, I can say. If you see the number of users of Netflix or Hotstar, which is owned by Disney, Sony Pictures, again, they will provide for different sources. They outsource uh, their uh, products. These are all companies who provide media or uh, our usual web series or movies that we watch. And uh, companies like gaming, okay. Now, if you people are fan of PUBG, Tencent Games are the ones who manufacture PUBG. If you're a big fan of GTA, you have played once in a while, probably in your, uh, everybody would have played it as far as you. It's made by Rockstar Games. And EA, if you like NFS, this done by EA Games. You like FIFA, EA Games. So like these gaming industries and media industries also require cybersecurity professionals. So why do they require it? So if, for example, uh, there are a lot of things that goes around uh, in the background, okay? And okay, I got an input about telecom industry. Telecom industry, again, yeah, it comes under this. You can put it under the tech company. You can put it under the retail company because they generate revenue, uh, they bill it for them. In telecom companies also, there are huge, uh, you know, income or cybersecurity professionals required. Uh, it can be classified under any one of these. The reason I said as it might be put under consulting or service based, some tech companies, what they do is they, for example, Airtel or Odafone, okay, uh, they have a, as a retail, you know, uh, or you say a telecom industry, they want services from, okay, uh, for example, I'll outsource all my information security to Infosys. So Infosys will handle their security requirement. So now if you say in government, it was BSNL. I didn't put it into the government as a telecom industry because you know the current situation of BSNL was not good. I'm not sure whether they're hiring for cybersecurity. Hence, I've excluded. So you can conclude uh, telecom as any part of this, uh, whatever there is on the screen, like in the five. Or if you want to classify as a separate thing, you can, we can still do that. Okay. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. I'll make a note so that I can put it in the, the uh, next time when I'm going to update this. Thanks for the input. Uh, so all these industries where you can still focus and get into and work on it. And as you rightly mentioned one of the, you know, about the uh, uh, telecom industry nowadays, if you see the growth of internet has much more increased. And uh, if I want to be honest, if you see who is the biggest provider of internet services in India, it's Tata, uh, sorry. Yeah, I think it's a TCS, TCL limited, I can say that. They are the biggest provider of internet. From them, the different sources would take in. So it's like that, okay. Uh, so apart from that, you have ATL, Vodafone and all, but yeah, Tata is one of the biggest internet service providers. And you have other internet local, we get it from at and and uh, uh, in US and all, we have Verizon. And like we, have, we have a lot of uh, services. Thanks for noting down and uh, I'll bring that up in the next situation. So apart from this, we have, Uh, what are the jobs in cybersecurity? And this was one of the articles that was received from insidedice.com. This was taken on uh, December 2019. And if you see, it, it's in an order, okay? It's in an ascending order or a descending order, I can say from the top. So the most required jobs right now, uh, there's a job posted requesting skills. This is taken from, again, a source of data analytics and everything. There are 76% job postings for cybersecurity alone. And the growth is expected to grow with uh, you know, increase in 28.5%. That means from the previous year to this year, uh, we can expect a 100% growth definitely in cybersecurity. If you take other jobs, like a software developer, which was once famous, you know, uh, people have a lot of these questions in their college days. Uh, even I had this right out of college, we will think, what, what shall we do? Okay, one of our friends is like, we'll go Java development. We go web development. Hey, we do testing, man. You know, there's a lot of opportunity. If nothing works out, people go for two choices. There's a web development or we can do CCNA. Or go to JetKing or uh, IA, IAST and uh, we will get a hardware and networking certification. So like a lot of things goes in our mind, but there are certain blind spots like cybersecurity, which were never taught or told in us in, back in 2014 about the cybersecurity is landscape that was existing. We didn't, we never knew that. Uh, so, but currently, if you see, compared to software development or network engineer or computer architects, uh, the requirement for a cybersecurity analyst or a professional or an engineer is grown way too higher than all the other jobs combined. So that is what the current demand that is there and the growth that is increasing rapidly for a cybersecurity requ requirement. So this is a quite a, sm a small image. Okay, and I'm gonna do uh, this as a simple show so that it, it, you will be able to understand. 
how to understand to get an entry. So in the left hand side, you can see I have put an image where we have entry, uh, we have a mid level, we have senior management. This is for those people who are directly entering as a fresher into cybersecurity and how they can grow up the ladder. So the highest uh, designation one could reach in a cybersecurity is the chief information security officer. And before that, you have to clear all the entry level roles, mid level roles, and senior management roles. Again, this depends on company to company. And uh, these roles, which I was talking about in across the five industries or the six industries, including, there is a demand difference. So in tech companies, the requirement for a cybersecurity professional is higher compared to a government. And if you, if you compare banking and finance, they have a higher requirement of uh, cybersecurity professionals compared to the government or uh, retail and manufacturing, because sometimes most of the cybersecurity requirements are outsourced. Hence, other companies or tech companies will take care of it. They might have one or two roles or maximum a team of 10 people working for cybersecurity alone. The remaining things will be in-house or it will be outsourced. So the requirement varies from industry to industry and company to company, it might not be stagnant. So you can't expect uh, jobs to be enormous everywhere. Uh, you can understand that there is a slight difference and you can target on, on those companies based on the openings that you receive. So here also it's the same. For entry level, the requirement is more. And the mid level, it might be based on like four to eight years of experience. You get into the mid level, then you become a senior management about eight to 10 years experience. Then you grow up the ladder. So on the right hand side, this is for those people who have not got into cybersecurity, but they're interested. Okay, for example, uh, now I'm getting into a job right out of college, right? Now I get into a role called a network engineer or a software developer, but my passion is to get into cybersecurity. Can I get in? Yes, you can get in. But what happens is that sometimes companies consider a limited amount of that as a relevant experience the remaining would be a non-relevant experience so if i say you know i'm from a different background something like a tech support okay it might be non-relevant to the cyber security requirements but somewhere have worked on troubleshooting hardware networking and uh, other issues or ransomware attacks or virus attacks somewhere slightly they could see okay there might be a skill that is relevant but not completely for that again to get into cyber security you need to gain skills appropriately and then get into it so it might be uh, you can do a course, you can do a certification, you can prove your skills through doing various activities like uh, writing a uh, you know a blog, or you might have worked on finding bug working on bug bounties, finding vulnerabilities and bugs. Like there's a lot of things that you could try to get into this activity. Uh, hello, is there anybody who has unmuted? Yeah, can you please mute it? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll just take your walkthrough on how we can grow if you are from a different role. So if you see these are networking, software development, system engineer, finance, risk, and security intelligence. From there, how you can get into uh, entry level, mid level, and senior level. So I'll take you to the cyberseek.org and pathway. Let me showcase you though. And also there's a website called PayScale. So if somebody has questions about uh, how how you can get into cyber security, what would be the pay? What would be your salary once you get into it? You might have this doubt, so I can understand that. So there is also uh, this particular you know, uh, website called PayScale. We can, you can go ahead and check what is the current salary in that particular region. It might be from Bangalore, Chennai, uh, within India also the salary varies based on metropolitan or non-metropolitan cities. And also across the globe, you might seeing in dollars and pounds. And if you go for, uh, uh, you know, uh, Malaysia and other such the ringgits. So like it, it varies region to region, but this website, you can go ahead and you can just type a role of the company and the region. It will give you what is the median salary, average salary, and what is the highest salary received for that role. So uh, this is the website first I'll take you through. Now you have a software development skill and you have job opening details. How many openings are required in this particular role? Then you have about IT auditor. So now what I do is to be an IT auditor, if you see on the left hand side, you can come from a background of networking, system engineer and finance and risk analysis. You can be an ID auditor. And the job openings currently are 8,128 and average salary is $98,000. So I'm saying it in dollars. Don't compare it with the Indian salary because it varies. So $98,000 is like almost $100,000 in US, uh, which is almost 70 lakhs or 75 lakhs varying on the tax and other things. But in India, you can expect around uh, as an IT auditor, uh, eight to 10 lakhs is where you can fall around for that. 
uh, depending on the experience. But if you are coming as a fresher, you can expect 6 lakhs to 6.5 lakhs as a fresher. Growing up the ladder, you can expect more on the number of experience you gain. So from there, if you say that I'm in an IT auditor role, I have a particular background. Now I, am, I want to change into cybersecurity consultant. I don't want to do audits anymore. I want a different role. Yes, you can still go ahead from audit auditor to different role like a cybersecurity. And you can see what is the salary there. And what are the different roles you can again go ahead and manage in future in the advanced level? You can be an architect, you can be a cybersecurity engineer, and you can be an administrator. So again, if I go to cybersecurity architect, it starts around with the average salary of 133,000. But I've seen cybersecurity architects getting around like more than one crore of salary uh, with around experience of six to seven years. Again, it depends on company, it depends on experience and the skills that you have or the certifications that you own. So Whichever the role you pick, if you see on the right hand side and the left hand side, it will show what are all the roles you have to be gone through or you have to possess. Like from networking, you can get into cybersecurity engineer. Okay, and these are the roles that you could become analyst or investigator for forensic. So this is a very good website. You can always go, it's a cyberseek.org. You can go ahead and you can try it out and you can know what are the salaries and positions that you have and from which industry you can go for which one. It is a clear map. Uh, it, it's a very simple and very easy one. Now, this is the pay scale I was talking about. Now, uh, in the pay scale website, I have a one small requirement. Yes, I got to check. Okay, how we can use for pharmaceutical market? Can you tell me again? Bug boundaries. Okay, fine. Okay, we come and uh, again, another user had two questions. How we can use for pharmaceutical market? See, uh, for pharmaceutical markets, there are different compliance requirements. When I say compliance, uh, it's about, for example, uh, ISO 27001 is an industry-wide standard. But if you want to go for companies like uh, pharmaceutical, they do have that uh, requirement for cybersec, as I said, but the number of requirements would be way too low or it might be outsourced because IT would be there in the office, security would be outsourced. It might be like that. Or they have a compliance. If they have a customer data or if they have a health information, we call it as EPHI, uh, electronic person health information as per HIPAA Act. That is, if you're storing a US customer data, you have to follow EPA compliance. So based on that, they have to devise certain security requirements. Again, there's something called high trust. Again, it uh, depends on a different compliance requirement. There is now privacy law coming up everywhere because of that. Again, they need uh, security professionals in the company. So what happens is that there are something like a regulatory compliance that is coming around because they're from the top down. If you see GDPR, it's from the EU. It's a European Union. You can't say that it's a, uh, no independent compliance. No, it's a regulatory authority. They are saying you have to do it. You have to do it. And they have a requirement for that. Even in pharmaceutical and medical industries, you do have openings. And, uh, and uh, I forgot to tell you this. Okay, since you bought this topic, you have some companies who manufacture pharmaceutical products. Okay, to find the bugs in that, you need to have a specific skill set like a uh, IoT testing. So IoT testing or IoT security comes where healthcare devices are connected or uh, and you have some like source code analysis where these programs are written in an assembly level language for this all these scanners and a lot of things they do it. How the data has been integrated, where it is shared, how it is shared, how it is communicated, how it is securely stored, whether it is encrypted, a lot of things that you will definitely love about it. Okay, and uh, uh, I think you have a question regarding salary and uh, Okay, so these questions, Abhishek and Vivek, I will answer it in the end because uh, right now I'll showcase all the things that I have in stock and then I'll come back to your questions. Okay, uh, so uh, I know about your salary question you have. Uh, that's why I'm taking you to this uh, website called Payscale. Let me showcase you that so that it will be helpful. Okay, see, this is a Payscale website. If you see this average security uh, information security analyst on an average will have 5,58,000 as a, you know, average fee. That doesn't mean that you get the exact pay. It depends on the company, whether you're working on a big or a small organization and what is your role. Depending on that, you can expect when it is an average, you can take from 3.5 lakhs to 6.5 lakhs. In between that, you can take 5.5 as an average. And uh, this is for Chennai, uh, Tamil Nadu, which I'm saying right now. This is for Chennai, and if you want any other location, you can go ahead and try it. For example, if I take uh, Mumbai, okay, because in Mumbai, it's cost of living, everything is expensive. I'll take that. And 
and in this website again you can give your details like your experience so this is a very intuitive website you have to give you have to give a lot of input okay this is the reason i'm showing this you can try on your own you can choose your current job and then once you choose your current job it will have a lot of questions okay it will ask what kind of company which job title how many years you have which city you're working in once you provide all those details this website will automatically give you what is the average salary in that industry for your experience that you're earning or you're getting and what you can expect when you do a shift so this website is very intuitive and you can go ahead and try this it's a it will give you analysis when you are going to switch your career or going for a next company what is the hike you can expect what is the salary in that particular area and everything again on the right hand side of this website you will find what is the demand how much uh, you know what is the skill set that is growing if you see on the right hand side here it says uh volume assessment is growing with 34 percent it security is going with five percent auditing is growing with five percent and apart from that uh for entry level and early career it is actually declining by 11 percent but if you see the salaries have been increased for mid career and experience 115 percent that's a huge lot of career but once you are in the industry for three to four years you will get it uh, and i have another question okay okay uh vivek again i'm saying uh, this question i will answer at the end because uh, salary expectations will differ even you have a certification a skill set they will look for experience people uh i think you might have a common question i'll i'll explain you this okay and then so that i can move further let me clear your doubt over here itself how much you can expect as a salary if you have a certification and if you have a skill set what can i go ahead and expect i understand so this is a website which was i was talking about it is your city experience what skill or certification you have or who is your employer what kind of job you're doing and which field it is this will give you clear in the in input about how much salary you can get for your experience for your certification that's why i'm recommending pay scale where you go it will show in rupees it will show how much salary you get how much salary you can expect as an average and how much you can receive but it depends from organization to organization so a product based company might pay more in terms of something is very fast growing it's a unicorn startup it's a boo you know it's it's a funded company uh, compared to a very small startup company if you say like uh, companies like tech companies who are like providing services uh, vapt services you have a certification of whatever the certification may be ch oscp you have a cissp again it depends on your experience uh, let me remind you guys cyber security is not a field where you get paid like how you get in a bug bounty or how you get inside a developer job it's a very stable role and the graph is very very uh you know it, it, it grows linear it grows proportional with respect to your experience and your skill because in cyber security you cannot expect a higher pay even though you have a very strong skill set because you need to have the experience in working with different environments different tools uh different kind of uh, products so the more you work here the more knowledge you gain and your job becomes more stable and your salary gradually increases it's the same applicable for networking industry as well and our cyber security industry also so even though you get into here uh it might be like a seesaw would be getting in a smaller company around like 25 to 30 lakhs but but again a seesaw in a bigger company like dell you take hp you take google and microsoft they would be getting in millions of dollars it, i'm saying it literally millions of dollars but in india you might be getting like 25 to 40 50 lakhs again it depends on which company is working in but if you take it in the us or eu you will be getting in crores so uh, it depends on the region it depends on the company it depends on uh, whether it's a regional ciso or a global ciso so you can't expect like a developer who is getting like 25 lakhs right out of the college if he's a very good developer or 15 lakhs right out of the college because it's a development skill they're looking for but in cyber security it's better not to have that expectation that you do a oscp or you do a oscce or become a very highly certified every company will not pay you the same amount because there would be no requirement for it only some consulting companies who are having high-end clients who pay more for them they would be offering a better pay so you look at the company where you're going what is your job role and what are you getting out of it because uh, here experience matter and again your skill and certification also matters both should go hand in hand and then your salary comes the next so if you're looking for a stable and a very long career and you want a very you know uh, learning and growing and that depends on your experience uh, this is one of those career fields or where you can build your career over the time i can't say that uh, because you have a certification 
right out of the you get a certification you get a 10 lakhs package it doesn't work like that or if you if you're a very famous bug bounty hunter they would pay you like 15 lakhs package and they'll hire you no i can't expect things would go like that for all the companies it depends on the company who is hiring you and how much they are ready to invest for security so again people uh, this depends on the budget every company has a budget for info, information security so within that budget they have to have you know hire people they have to provide the job and salaries they have to invest on products so ceo who is on the top or the cto whoever is there he will decide among this budget how many people i can hire how many technical equipment or resources that i can purchase if you see some companies would have invested on nessus colis nexpos a lot of other tools they get a pro version tools and everything because the company thinks like uh, we have given a certain budget for information security within that they need to manage this uh, so because of those reasons people are hiring within that limit without that people will not pay much until it's a consulting company which thinks that you know you bring a great revenue back to the company you bring in the clients and everything so it depends on industry to industry profile to profile and experience and skill that you possess so uh, hope you have hope i have clarified your doubt is there any other doubt or anybody has uh, apart from this in terms of salary or growth that you're looking for so you can uh, send me on the message hope vivek i have answered your question uh, if you have any queries you can use the payscale website and it will give you the answer that you're looking for and uh, yeah and vikram as i said earlier like for pharmaceutical it's about a healthcare industry have privacy and also they have some complaints like hipa and they also have to go for a certification lock high trust where they can work on this and they have to the organization have to be certified to use a ephi or customer information without the security requirements the contract should not be provided the product should not be supported and also the investors might not help them to provide so there are some audits that happen like sock or sock to audits where they again they have to show to the investors that how secure the organization is uh, among the five trust principle they have to pick three principles and yeah on all these audits they would look for information security requirements and that works well and uh, hand in hand with infosec now every company or every investor before investing on a company they are looking for whether they are secure because the damage that a information security uh, leak or whatever whatever the data breach happens the damage is very very huge uh for example you can take yahoo once upon a time it was a 500 million dollar company once the yahoo emails got breached i think it was sold around for 5 million or 50 million dollars so uh, that that was a huge impact what happened after uh, a data breach uh, similarly you can look for other organization also like equifax had the data breach the trust is gone uh, sbi had a card breach for, through hitachi systems and they also had to suffer a lot of losses because of that and uh you might heard about the uh, insurance okay uh, so there is some insurance for cyber insurance for this kind of breaches but if the uh, organization has come to know that it's because of the failure of meeting information security requirement that this thing has happened they definitely can't get those uh, insurance money as well so people are really really focused and very much keen about having all the security requirements in place so uh this is for the first uh, session that we were going through in understanding pay scale and other things the next thing we would step into uh, resume writing and uh, all those things for us so a lot of people have confusion uh, it might be from the fresher end or it might be in the experience and like what should i put in the resume how should i specify it what all things i can do it so first thing i have put it as a fresher so that i can give all everybody a heads up so it might be mistakes we have done as a fresher also that we have to correct even he is a fresher you should not hesitate if you make mistakes it's right it's okay it's okay to do mistakes but you have to correct it on the go okay so here there are three things in the resume that you can look in it's about the beginning the middle the end so the beginning always contains your name and details all the phone numbers and email addresses and the middle contains your education details your post work project details and uh, other activities the end contains your work experience interests and hobbies and also you can put your personal details whatever you can put it in the end so that's a simple way to approach a resume is a uh, the beginning what you have to put the middle what you have to put the ending what you have to put so now we understood but never ever put lot of things in the hobby section like i surf the web i watch web series i listen to music it's a typical thing everybody does but a hobby is something like collecting stamps collecting uh, so few people have hobbies of collecting different boxes or few people have hobbies of uh, do doing a, going on a trekking and all those things so hobby is something that people do occasionally but not a daily activity so uh, keeping that in mind you have put very very limited you know things in the hobbies but it should be very precise as well Uh, the second thing is to have a clear career objective 
So this is the area I have seen a lot of people making mistakes, even I have done this, I am open to acknowledge that. So what happens uh, in the college, we have a campus interview, for example, okay. Uh, they have a job requirement for a developer. And uh, we had nobody taught me how to do a resume. One, we took a resume from one guy who did it good. And we, we sent it to everybody and we started copy pasting every the same content on all those things. So we went to a development job, it's fine. And then we went for a networking job, which was again an, another interview after a few days. I said in the career objective that my uh, I'm looking for a very good software company where I can become a software engineer and grow in the career. Now this networking guy got a little bit, uh, you know, shocked looking at like you came for a network engineer job, but you are saying that you want to work in a software company and you want to be a very good software professional. So why your career objective is like this and why are you coming for this job? So now I got caught like, you know, what will I answer? Like, I you know I just came here because it's a campus interview or because I want to get a job. No, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you have to understand which job you're applying. So you might be working in an IT field uh, without a relevant experience in cybersecurity. But in career objective, when you're applying for a cybersecurity job, you have to change your resume, your career objective aligned to that. You can say, I want to become a cybersecurity professional and work in a uh, very good information security firm or a cybersecurity company. So that makes your very career objective precise. So you can't always keep the same career objective going around and you can't say the same generic statements like I want to be a very good professional in this industry. No, but the more precise you make it, the more crisp you make it, it must be better. So now also make your resume a little bit personal and give it more value. So when I say it, make it personal, you have to showcase your personality traits in terms of your qualities, uh, whatever that's a leadership, whether, whether you have a, uh, team handling or problem solving, you're a quick learner, those things is fine. And focus on value, like uh, uh, how you can prove how valuable to your employer. So you can say like, okay, uh, uh, you are a very good learner or a very good listener, or you, you can work extensively or you can find bugs or you can work hard. So what value you are bringing on the table, for example, uh, highly motor journalism graduate seeking job opportunity in advertising industry. And is interested in leveraging writing skills, graphic designing, and while well, getting a valuable experience. So you're saying in the statement that you are a graduate seeking a job opportunity in this particular advertising industry, and you have a journalism graduate, and you're interested in leveraging writing skills and graphic design experience to positively contribute to your company's objective while gaining valuable experience. That means you're saying, I will gain the experience in these areas from your company, and I will give back my experience in making your uh, meeting your company objectives. So this is a simple line that you can put that would be very much impressive about your career objective. So this is one sample. Again, there are a lot of websites which can give you much more information. You can surf around that and make sure whenever you're applying for a specific job, make your career objective clear as per that requirement. Okay, don't keep a same career objective for all the job requirements. You might be going around testing job, uh, networking job, cyber security job, whatever it might be. Make sure you put that to very, very clear and very, very crisp and precise as per that job requirement. It takes two minutes to sit and edit, but uh, don't make that mistake and then try to have a situation where you might lose your chance on the job. All right. So next thing is about your the middle part where you put your academic projects and everything, whether it's a group project, whether it's a side project. Uh, this I, I I recommend to put it across even for uh, experienced people we put our projects that we worked on and for fresher also it is required you might be not working on it much but uh, it is a very good act, uh, thing that you put your leadership qualities whether you work in a group or what response do you share so for example this happened in most of the interviews when you give your resume they see that your projects and they see like you're you're a very good team uh, not a team player or you are a very good performer. Sometimes you can expect questions right out of your resume. He'll say like, okay, can you tell me about your project? What role did you perform? What was your role in your team? How many members were in your team? How the role was divided? What were your, your role in it? What did you contribute to the team? So it is very, very known fact in most of the colleges, people buy projects. I'm, uh, I'm agreeing to the fact that I have seen this. We have done this in a lot of times you might have been not been an entire project you might not know an entire project but when you're putting it in a resume make sure you put what you know or you be thorough with it you understand the project even though you might have not worked on it completely understand what your project is what are the things that you might have done or you have done in it then you understand or make up your mind that if you ask a question like that in the interview if you get a question like this what your answer would be 
and how will you answer according to what is your product what is your project what role did it do how was the output did you face any issues did you face any challenges in the team so this is also some interviews very keen on understanding they might ask question like tell me what are the challenges that you faced in your project so you have to be very thorough so the more better you answer confidently the interviewer will be very much impressed that you know so much about your project you can't say my role is to make a, you know test the code and that's all i know about my project no that's not the right way so this is the my project this was the objective this is what the result we were trying to achieve in that my role was this and these are the challenges that my team faced and i have helped in this and i have understood how things work so make your answer in a manner that it is conveying that you know the project very well and you did it did your part very well in that as well so that's about uh, academic projects now relevant skills so sometimes what happens we copy paste uh, from our friends resumes or inter any resumes we get in the internet for the job role so people would have this basics of c c++ networking java c dot net c sharp and yeah html css javascript uh, angular js they put lot of skills and it hardware troubleshooting networking everything they'll put so do you have all those skills relevant to you so if the company is looking for a dot net developer and he sees that in your resume and you would have copy pasted that that means you are getting caught if he says like okay tell me about dot net or can you answer me about can if i give a requirement can you write a simple program in front of me and show it to me and you'll give a piece of paper and a pen will you be able to overcome that at that point so every opportunity that you have please don't try to miss it i don't want anybody to miss any opportunity that's the reason we are emphasizing on this put relevant skills that you know so that you get questions from those skills you which you can answer confidently if he again says like hey, okay i see you have a java xp uh, knowledge uh, do you know dot net also you can say like i know i know java but given the time i can work on dot net as well with the training so that that's a confident answer or if he says that can you write a small program in java for me right in front of me right now or execute a program and you can give a piece of paper or a pen or a laptop but are you thorough enough uh, with writing a simple program that you know so when you are putting relevant skills make sure you put it with your uh, skill set on whether you are a beginner level you are intermediate or you are professionally skilled in that or how well how good you are don't copy paste the skills that you have seen from other resume or you edit it you remove it and don't feel bad that you are having very less skills it's okay to have less skills but you can you can't be master of everything Uh, so you have mastered one skill that's fine you say that i'm very much strong in this i know this skill you can put it across not a problem remaining skills you can say like like others i know these skills but you are not proficient in that but you are proficient in something you highlight that you be more confident in that and you will be able to crack it that's how it goes okay uh. next thing is about this is a sample i have in uh, on the screen right now you can see like there are two resumes this for a fresher sample on the left hand side it's a very simple uh, precise and on the right hand side it's more colorful so it doesn't mean that if your resume is very simple that it got, does not get selected it's not like that simple or it's colorful both doesn't matter as long as you have the right content so keep your content good keep it in an order in a structured manner it will still look good and people will still accept it so people would be thinking okay if i have a simple resume i'm not having that colorful resume and all uh, it might be a problem no it's nothing like that you can have either ways but what content you have on it that that matters a lot so coming up with the next one uh, we have a experienced resume so most of us who are in experience uh, skill set okay here and here if you see there are a lot of things that would vary so here your college graduation marks and your personal details is not of that much priority because you are already in the industry for a long time your experience the projects that you worked on the skill set and certifications matter so you put your professional summary put the highlights in terms of uh, what skills that you possess what certification you possess what are the contributions you did then put your experience company by company and what are the activities you did in that company what are the skills you have acquired in that company then you put your education in a simple line that you have done engineering or one liner is sufficient then you put your additional information whether extra curricular activities awards recognitions rewards that you received anything as such so it's very simple straight so that when you are when he receives your resume it will be easier for him to go through your skills and your experience and ask questions to you and similarly for ex pro you know for a fresher it's all the same way when he's asking you question you look at your you know your career or 
what what your academics you look at your academics you look at your skill set you look at your projects or internship and the courses you have done then he'll be easy for you to ask you the questions so it's like that and i've seen even some people you know i've seen some people doing this mistake you know they copy pasted a resume and sent it to me and i found the same father name in the both the resumes and i understood because the template was same but in the personal details the last page this lady forgot to change it i guess so sometimes these kind of mistakes do happen uh, they had a same father and uh, same address and everything and they were not sisters that i know for sure uh, because uh, they are from a same college from a different branch so these things happen so when you are copy pasting also be be very much aware and cautious about what you are putting in the resume uh, don't never try to you know don't miss the opportunity or try to screw it up because every opportunity is a golden opportunity and everything is important and uh, every time you give your best and do 100% that's what i expect from every everybody to crack into a job now it's like now i given a lot of things about writing resume and skills but what is the most important things that you can keep in mind when you are attending an interview i can give you a lot of answers one is from the monster link i can take you there and i can tell you like what are the advice you have to go a lot of people give gyan on this lot of input that you can get but i have put it very simple and precise because i don't want to tell you like you know you have to be on time you have to be looking good all these things it's quite common but first thing i would expect you to be a good listener don't interrupt the interviewer and don't talk too much simple thing when he is asking you a question let him complete take a 10 seconds break don't interrupt him in between uh, when he is you know explaining you something let him complete it then you start answering and when you are answering don't try to beat around the bush be accurate and precise that's the third part so second thing is that why i said like dress, dress well uh, you know look groomed and depends on the company dress code as well it's because some companies are very strict on this like you go for a consulting company they expect you to come in a formal or you can wear a suit also that is totally fine it's a corporate uh, formal but when you go for a company as a product based they might ask you to come in casuals so when i say casuals i've seen couple of people coming in in uh, you know a shirt with lot of scribblings on it they come in uh, on jeans or a, you know a shaded jeans and all those things with a stud and all those things yeah it's cool it looks cool you know it might be looking cool but corporate casuals would be like a polo shirt and a jeans it's a simple jeans not a shaded jeans not a torn jeans it's a simple jeans uh, good shoes and a uh, polo t-shirt that looks good decent so the first impression which you make is very very important if you're wearing a shoe make sure it's polished and uh, this is a simple tip i would like to give if you're wearing a formal right make sure you make, make it perfect whatever you do try to be the best in it so uh, if you are wearing a formal make sure your wrist watch your shoe and your belt is of the same color okay so that and your shirt and pant is also of the same similar contrast so if you are wearing a black shoe make sure you wear a black belt and a black wrist watch or a metal one it might be gold or a silver whichever you have if you are wearing a brown make sure everything goes along with the brown so that's a very good impression that you create Uh, you know well i and shirt and all these things would matter to it when you're going for a casuals even though they say they as casuals when you go in a simple you know decent uh, dress with a polo t-shirt and a simple corporate casual pant or a jeans and a loafer or even a complete shoes that's fine but too much of funky color and you know the popping up colors all those things it might not be a good impression that's what i think but if you have, if you, it's your choice if they say casual that you are trying to pick but this is what i picked from my wardrobe now the third thing is be confident in answering and ensure your answers are accurate and precise so when you do sometimes when you have to answer right don't beat around the bush don't come around i know sometimes you get stuck on answers what you have to do uh, but always try to be accurate and precise in your answers just like you have it on your resume so that is like uh, fourth point is again expectations set expectations clearly with respect to job responsibilities now sometimes in a job they might ask you like you are from a uh, security analyst you know sim solution you worked as a security analyst you don't know anything about forensic now the job requires requirement requires you to be a for a, you know incident responder as well that requires a basics of forensics as well to investigate now set the expectations that say have worked on a analyst role i have been working on a log monitoring but i am interested in the incident response but i don't have forensic experience or knowledge i'm trying to acquire it but at the moment i don't have it but given an opportunity i would like to learn put it across like this so that he can understand you know this you don't know this but you are, you are eager to learn it or given an opportunity you will learn it that's what the companies expect they don't expect a 100% uh, you know candidate who has 100% meeting all the qualities nobody can meet 100% requirements though there is no perfect candidate 
but when you are showcasing that you have that skill set you are the eager and the passion to learn that's what matters in those times and you be very clear so that you know sometimes people get try to do all the certifications through proxies and they get the certification they go interview they clear the interview now when they get into the job they get into a project now they get panic they think i have to do a course i need to get this skill as soon as possible they try to run to the trainers online training they say like i need to learn in 5 days 6 days it's not going to happen i know job is important but it's not also good to lie in the job uh, because you need it so badly so you make sure that you take your time in preparing yourself then hit it and then hit the bulls eye so don't try to get into job and try to learn because it would be much more harder for you to face the problems once you get into the job about when people uh, know that you are not skilled up to it so that's what i tell uh, i would expect you know people to be very honest if you don't know it say saying like you are interested and know how to say like okay i'm interested to learn given an opportunity like that now explain the scenario uh, so explain with an example scenario when you're not able to explain through words sometimes you might be asked a question and now you don't know the answer now how would you answer it you try to take example okay uh, this guy would ask like tell me about the latest vulnerability that is in the market uh, since you are from cyber security what is the latest vulnerability or a latest attack now you might be thinking what shall i answer okay and say i can say like okay uh, i don't know the exact vulnerability that is there but i heard recently that there is a maze ransomware in the cognizant i think that is one of the latest uh, attack that has happened but i don't know the exact vulnerability code of it so uh, this is what i think or you can give an example what is the impact of a breach that you think uh, you don't know you can take in criteria like uh, am- the amount spent on investigation and recovery there is a lot of aspects about trust and brand impact then the financial loss uh investors could back out there's a lot of impact but what you can say you can take an example i don't know the lot of factors that could impact the scenario but i know brand and uh, financial hit will be there for example yahoo as a company had so much of losses because it got breached so you don't know the exact answer but you know somewhere something have happened because of that there was a situation like this created so if you're not able to answer through words you don't getting those words you're not able to get those numbers take an example explain it it's nothing wrong to take an example it is much more effective as well for you to be conveying the message now how to say no how to say no which i have already told you uh, it's like if you don't know if you don't have the skill once you said i don't have it you know how to say no to it you say like i'm interested in this opportunity or interested in this uh, to learn this but i don't have the skill as of now but given an opportunity i would like to learn this is how you try to say no and your interest should be genuine just because you want to get into job don't say like you know i will learn given the opportunity once you go there you should not feel the difficulty if you are very much interested to learn be honest about it and then asking questions like okay for the interview sometimes after the interview is over they might ask you uh, okay what well, ask if you do have anything to ask in those times you can also ask the questions in understanding uh, what all things that you can expect from them like you can ask them okay what would be my job responsibility or which role or which team i'll be getting in what i'll be doing all these things you can ask for that okay uh, apart from that what else you can ask is about uh, you know the major difference is like what are my opportunities that i would get whether i get a travel as an option what would be the pay what would be the other skills that you could possess and also after the interview it's also good in asking a feedback from your interviewer you can say like uh, uh, what are my area of opportunities that means you are asking him what are the you know, cons or negatives that he has found in the interview so that you could improvise you can ask him directly also okay can you give me a feedback about the interview so that i could improvise or i can work on it definitely they will provide you inputs like where do you lack whether it's a communication whether it's a technical skill or what you don't possess all those things is very much important you can get a lot of input from it and you can be much more prepared in your upcoming interview so don't hesitate to ask questions now last thing don't be desperate and do general follow up i mean just do general follow up so when i say don't be desperate people sometimes come an hour before the interview i have seen that and people would be very much calling up following up asking like what happened what happened whether i'm selected or not i didn't get any response i know we are eager to get the job but don't show the desperation and people also sometimes say i love this company sir i love to work in this company this is my dream company is my dream job yeah i know you are excited all about this sometimes you do get excited but are you so desperate to get this job 
uh, I know like work is a different thing, but there would be a lot of other companies also who would have said the same thing, like I love this company. So we can understand which is discretion and which is uh, curiosity because sometimes people put it out like, okay, this is one of the organizations I love it. I like to work and see that my, myself to grow in future. I think this is the right place for me to work and grow. So that is the right way of showing your interest in the company and uh, calling up continuously and using these kind of words in an interview like, you know, uh, because I, I chose this interview because of the company, it's a big brand, I, I love to work in this company, all those things, try to avoid those things. And then do a follow up, like once in a week, once in three days, just drop an email, that's a basic etiquette to follow up, put an email like, hey, this is a gentle reminder of a follow up about my previous interview. Uh, do let me know if you have anything or else uh, would you suggest for me to uh, work on the other interviews as well because so that they can come back and give a proper answer on it. If they if they say, okay, if you're not selected, you can work on the other interviews instead of waiting for it to be answered. So it's like that. Now, uh, this might be long and short. This is a website I have given you. Sometimes people put in the resume a CV. Some people put it as a resume. But what's the difference between both? It's a simple difference. CV is long covers your entire career and all the status. And now in resume, it's very short, not particular formatable, but highly customizable. It's like you have page limit, you have number of words that you choose, you have a, a particular expertise that you can put in CV. And in resume, it's like very short, crisp, crisp uh, precise. It might not exceed more than one or two pages. Very, very, very short. It's like one page resume is what you, what you say. Now in CV, other than that, you have something called cover letter also. People have doubts what is what is this cover letter and other things. So cover letter is something like, uh, you know, uh, you use it to describe how much, uh, what your skill set with respect to this job, what is your experience and how well you are aligned with this job that you can take it as an example. So that is all about like a, a cover letter that you can get it in the internet. You have to write a precise, deeply like a letter you have to mention, like what are your qualities, your experience, and how well it's aligned with the job requirement and all those things. So that is about like uh, the resume writing and CV and Vitae and these are the references. Now I'm going to show you some of the uh, requirements on the LinkedIn. Okay. Now if you see, if there are any job requirements is your first question, right? So let me take as a cyber security analyst. So this is Nokri. I'm going for cyber security analyst and i'll take information security okay i'll choose location for now as bangalore this is in india if any people are joined out of country you can uh, and this, uh, this is one of the cities in india and this is a naukri website it's a job portal that i'm working on so i'm going to tell you how to understand the job postings the requirements and how to use it effectively now i'll tweak the industry uh, experience to zero years this is for a fresher i'm doing so if you see, so Bangalore alone, I have uh, seen like three requirements for a junior cyber security analyst and cyber security uh, requirement as such. Now if I take all the locations, uh, last 30 days. I'll take the SIM. Okay, you see this? This is 43 uh, jobs that you have for information security. So if you see this network security engineer, even though he is a network security engineer, it is a requirement for SOC or a SIM solution. So here, once you go here, for example, this is a NetApp, this is a famous company uh, in terms of networking solution. Now, if you go here, uh, okay, this is a job description about the company and everything. Now you have, you have something about the knowledge and idea of so you see this, they are asking about SIM tool incident responders. So this is what I told. You might not have an incident responder experience. You can still apply this job and say that you are interested to learn this. There's nothing wrong in it. You can still try for this job. But make sure you have the knowledge or skills required in these kind of areas. Uh, you can also use these keywords, okay? Like you have experience in SIM tool, you have experience in ideas, monitoring analysis, network traffic and log analysis. You can use these keywords because that will effectively increase your chances of getting the job. It will get hit when they search for this kind of resumes who have this kind of skill set. So there's nothing wrong in trying that. And okay, this is another company. I said as an experience is there offering up to 10 to 15 lakhs if you can see. Okay, this is for security engineer. Okay, this is a different role. This is much better than that. I can show the difference between it. 
now there is a security requirement that is required okay this certification they are looking for and uh, they are asking these are the activities that they do it so they are looking for it security firewalls ids ps web and email security server security all these things and also they have something like this is the day-to-day -day task policy management you do all these activities as such now how many of you does possess these skills it's one question and uh, how many of these skills are relevant to you so they're asking here that you should be knowing a coding experience you should be knowing about it security windows uh, server testing and everything they need a certification as well so look about all these things and see how much skills that is relevant to you and then you apply for this job it's nothing wrong because they are asking for sim also so if you are a person who's working in cyber security analyst before okay you're working in a cyber security analyst you can still try for this job because a couple of skills are relevant to you so in one way this is relevant but again apart from this you have for different locations also you have a lot of jobs open and uh, there is some requirement in linkedin as well if you go for a linkedin jobs so these are some of the jobs that's going on in the market as of now uh, if you see like these are the job requirements they have in terms of uh, it security and all those requirements now what happens in linkedin is it sometimes give you inputs whether how much of uh, you know requirement is aligned to it so for example if i pick this job i have some skills in my profile and it will show me like how much of skills that are relevant where is it yeah okay nine applicants mid senior level oh these are the links they are expecting and uh, let me try it because that just comes on my app but i think here it's taking me to the company website okay let me find the linkedin jobs okay linkedin easy apply this i can check okay see this is the one i said how you match to this skill this is what it shows in your uh, uh, from your resume or from your linkedin page that you have updated about your skills and experience so out of all the skills i have only sim is one hit that has matched these are things i don't have probably i can put it in my uh, profile or things so that it could match the keywords that is there in this profile that they're looking for so this for a SOC manager and uh, these are the things that they're expecting. I might not have all this in my resume currently, but if I put all these things, if I know this and if I put it in my resume, it will increase my chances of getting hired or getting noticed to pick my resume out of it. So this is how you can use LinkedIn and other things effectively. And if you see, there are still a lot of jobs going around. Uh, okay. You can see the freshness there are 14 hours ago they have updated in pwc they're looking for job profiles two days ago three days ago they're still hiring so there are a lot of companies that are still hiring hiring is going on it's not completely froze for example ericsson again uh this uh you know ericsson is a uh, uh it's one of the companies into more te telecom one of the uh, you know candidates were asking so if you see there is still opening for it and uh, it's nine hours ago the job is posted in the telecom industry and this is like a SOC team and this is the experience that they're looking for zero to three years is available for freshers also and these are the requirements or skill set that they're looking for so this is how we can effectively use linkedin and now and other platforms to get the job requirement that you have okay so hope that you know you can you can use this effectively in terms of getting your job whatever the job that you like you can still have a lot of good opportunities in it a lot of jobs are still being posted don't worry about uh, getting a job is difficult or anything as such in this kind of scenarios it's still possible it's still open and it's still you have a lot of opportunities going around right and again Deloitte also is hiring it's i think three weeks they have not removed this job post so that you can follow up with them and check whether uh, they have any openings still going around so that you can work on it so Apart from this, uh, okay. And this is one of the reasons I told the resume was the CV. Uh, these are the differences which you can take and you can check. So these are the overall things that is happening across the industry. 
there is a very positive sign that things are going to get better there is, there is going to be job opportunity for everybody uh, there are still openings going around and if you have any doubts or concerns you can let us know and this event is totally sponsored by the hacktivist uh, they are 35 plus experienced infosec professionals they have and they also provide trainings across the globe in various languages regional language like hindi and business language like english and apart from that they also provide trainings in spanish and portugal as well and this is their phone number and there's a whatsapp contact information and they provide at a very very low cost for all those people who are interested in learning this course with a, a 6000 for indians and anybody across apart from india it's 100 us dollars and this course module is are as follows because they have a very wide range of courses provided by the hacktivist if you see it's from alien world it's android device it's bug bounty assembly level language program for uh, you can use, use it in embedded computing testing or uh, iot testing as well and there is like one limit assessment and uh, uh, you are also on uh, a sort of snort analysis source code reviews all those things and SOC, how to manage or how to work in a SOC environment all those things so these are like a lot of courses they are providing at a very applicable cost and somebody asked me about healthcare right this is the ipa compliance training for healthcare industry uh, so like every industry has its own compliance requirement has job requirements that we seen in nokia and linkedin similarly you can go ahead and take these courses up and where you can learn and you can enhance your skills and be prepared for those job opportunities so that you will not lose on anything so it might be you might be a fresher you might be from a different job background uh, or an IT background, you might be in a cyber sector who's looking for a switch your career into a different role or you want to do a lateral movement and activists are there to help you. Activists will provide you all the necessary skill set that you want to be trained on and we have the trainers working uh, remotely. They will provide you online courses and trainings at your dedicated time and also they work on all the different courses and uh, they have Hello. various things according to your customized. Hello. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. No uh, I have a doubt. Uh, like I am in a SOC mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. so wants to move to the pen testing web okay. application security. So, mm -hmm. what are the certification or skills are required for that, and uh, how to move on it? Okay, no problem. Uh, thanks for bringing it up because I, I thought to give this introduction complete and then bring it on about the next topic. Because I told you, for people who are doing to move into their career, also it's possible. For example, in your scenario, you are into a security analyst role. Now you want to be a penetration tester. So the basic things for a penetration tester are the web app application tester is you need to know web application penetration testing and also network and vulnerability analysis. So uh, in penetration testing, there are two types, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing at network system and server level, then about the web application layer. Apart from this, for mobile also, it's different. You have Android and iOS pen tester as well. So uh, the basic certification to get into security, you might have already known it's a CA certification is required, but you want to be a penetration tester and you have the professional skill set. Uh, you can go for OSCP as well, but to reach to the OSCP, there's a lot of preparations that takes behind where hacktivists can help you out in taking that kind of an examination you need to build up your skill set so whether you are starting from the scratch or you are at the level zero you don't have to worry uh, there are courses from the hacktivist also but if there's a certification that you're opting for you can go for uh, something like an oscp and uh, if it is a web application you require you need to have web application penetration testing and also about the network layer but if you if you are interested in mobile application that is like android and ios you can go for that as well so for a web application pen test, you need to take up the course or a skill set. You can work on bug bounty handlings as well and build up your repo and you can get into the job. It's not uh, going to be a difficult part. But again, it takes time in acquiring those skills. So the more time you spend, the more you enhance your skills, the more easier for you it will be to crack the interview. Okay. And, and, and that is uh, web application is uh, more future is there or a SOC has more future okay. in the future? Uh -huh okay more scope okay so i'll keep this as a last part uh, sorry sorry for that uh okay. i was just closing it okay no problem since you brought it up so this is like uh, i just wanted to don't wanted to interrupt so any, everybody could ask a question so because question because before, what happening is uh, uh -huh. what happening is nowadays every industry is uh, -huh. uh they are doing a automation in security uh -huh. uh, like level one, which the SOC and list will do the, all the investigation part and all that. Mm -hmm. So they are integrating so tools, which mm -hmm. is a automation tool. Like we, uh, so tool name like Demisto. 
mm-hmm. it's a product by a palo alto and they are doing a automation completely so it's itself to the level one investigation then the he will uh, move to the second level so mm-hmm. the second level the as the security and list it will check whether it's completely true positive then only will uh, get into that okay. so in the now the same thing is going on with the pen testing also mm-hmm. they are doing the automation in that so mm-hmm. is it it is better to, to move in a web pen testing or not okay to answer your question even though there is automation automation cannot completely resolve all the problems it cannot completely perform an activity or has a human okay so there are certain things that they can automate and certain things they cannot for example in an sim as scenario as such alien vault was there from a very long time okay they had integrated solution for all the things and people are working on artificial intelligence machine learning to incorporate into sim so that they could it could take care of human activities but you see it can perform only to a certain level as i said up to a level one or as such after that they again yeah. re- need a human interference where a person can go ahead and check whether it's a true positive or not whether he can analyze uh, whether it's a, like they have called something called a threat hunting so threat hunting yeah. is a scenario where your tool would be not having those skills to manually go ahead and find the issues in the logs a uh, human effort is required our mind is required to be applied because we are able to think in a logical manner we are not working on an algorithm we uh, think logically we have or something like a gut uh, we have that sense whether something is going wrong and we analyze that so you have to enhance your skill periodically uh in terms of growing according to the requirement now if you can't say like this was expected in sim from a very long time since it's a just log monitoring and ticket raising solution most of the companies did that now it has incur you know this you have this correlation rules already written that if the scenario is like that automatically will detect whether it's a ransomware or not again to write a correlation rule to give that information or intelligence to this tool somebody has to re- sit and write this correlation rule in the back end somebody has to do research that is a malware analysis yes. and reverse engineering people who does that okay from there they update this correlation rule the sm team is integrated now after this even then the certain scenarios we are not getting alerts so we are not getting a true positives then the threat hunters will come into picture it might be sitting at a level 2 they will go ahead and look and they look for a new patterns uh, or new kinds of simulations they look for the patterns that is creating newly that is overcome by because hackers basically don't go in the same direction all the time they don't follow the same pattern once you have a rule written for it definitely they'll come in another way the pattern will change so the threat hunters will help them to cope up again there is a new correlation rule written and the intelligence is created with the new rule so that it can automate so automation is a continuous process it's not like they have written an automation program which automatically will learn everything somebody has to feed information to that again that job is taken care by our incident responders threat hunters and our analysis that we do in analyzing those patterns and the correlation rule is feeded so this job is again if you have those requirements your job is stable in that area it's not going to be affected but if you have not enhanced your skill you're just looking at uh, you know log monitoring and reporting yeah that's a area that is going to get impacted for sure now for web application yeah. this also it was talked for a very long time there is artificial intelligence tools coming up in the market which will do automatic penetration testing and everything uh, metasploit pro is one as such if you go ahead and click it it automatically does the activity and it will give you results which is exploitable or non exploitable but uh, if you are a uh, penetration tester okay there is something called business logic in web applications which cannot be tested by automation business logics are something which is how it's responding for different kinds of uh, clicks and features and uh, finding out the bugs manually so some things very 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 complex to automate it can't be done second thing exploits have to be rewritten or has to be modified based on the depending on the web application you can't use the same exploit all the time you have to rewrite it you have to customize it according to the port according to the web application according to the source code that you have seen so again that cannot be automated by the tool probably once you have written it you can put it in that automation tool and automate it but again going again they will update this application in future this exploit will not work you need to get a new exploit or somebody has to write a new exploit for it so again if you are having those skills you don't have to worry about automation automation will always happen in all the industries but as long as you are having your core strengths and skills uh, you know uh, it's like a gym you go to the gym every day to pump up right same way you have to understand the current scenario you have to build up those skills frequently and exercise on it only then you can stay and survive in any industry it's not applicable for cyber security alone once upon a time knock was there 
network operation center now they are converted into soc so people with networking knowledge also require to have a cyber security knowledge to take care of both the activities so the chain, things are going rapidly once upon a time getting a code and getting an output was a you know core reason of the developers now they have something called uh, secure code writing principles or practices that they have to do and must and should follow best example again is zoom because the initially the product was not focused on security now even it's grown so massively they're not able to fix it at once it requires a lot of time and effort so people who are getting uh, into uh, product building right now they're incorporating security from the very beginning itself so they don't have to face a lot of bugs in the future yeah. so hope i have answered your question in this so you don't have to worry about the changes that is going on it's affecting all the places but you have, once you have the skill you will become a very important asset in terms of that uh, particular activity yeah okay okay Thanks. Uh, anybody has any other question feel free to ask so that uh, we'll spend another uh, 10 minutes if you have any questions i'll answer them and then we can close the activity for uh, today yeah hello yes Uh, I have one question here. Uh, see, currently I'm in into IT like almost six years. Mm-hmm. So I want to change, uh, like change my career to a cyber security thing. Okay. Uh, so like uh, from last one, uh, like almost last one and a half year, I am learning the stuff. I have taken trainings as well, and mm-hmm. even I have completed CEH certification. Then I completed a uh, do like a cyber security professional certification as well. I'm mm-hmm. still learning. See, like uh, I was attending the interviews also, like around five to six interviews I attended in last uh, almost three months. Mm-hmm. So still, still currently I'm in application support only. But uh, I okay. in in my resume I I mentioned like like I almost one year in the cyber security. Mm-hmm. it has a little bit of cyber security the work i am currently doing right it has the that web application firewall stuff okay more logic so okay. uh, is it going to help in that case like because uh, they expect someone who worked on all those technology because i didn't work but i have a knowledge because i am uh, i've got the certification as well i have a knowledge so if mm-hmm. i am able to clear the, their interviews they don't be having any issues right like if i am moving there because my current role my company like suppose like i got the job in one company mm-hmm. so like uh, in my uh, that relieving letter they would be mentioning my role as application support only so okay does that be a problem ah uh, no so let me answer that. since you brought this question it's a very good question that most of them would be thinking whether your previous experience relevance is important for your next job based on the designation so it's not entirely okay. going to be impacting that because when you say about the previous job opportunity you would be mentioning something about the projects that you worked on and about your experience so for example let me uh, showcase my information as an example itself so i uh, hope you are able to see my screen right yes i am able to okay so i'll show you my profile this will answer your question so if you see this similarly when i was working in dell right so there was a couple of things i was doing okay there was hardware troubleshooting networking but i was also taking care of virus and ransomware attacks as a part of my job which was not completely relevant to it now i have this course and certifications all those things from uh, you know udemy and uh, uh, certifications like just like you did like i have from linkedin i have from cyber array and i have four more certifications like iso and ces and all those things now when i go for my experience right in the projects this is where i put up how my experience or my job responsibilities have been carried out now if i take projects as an example so very from very first beginning i have mentioned in my resume this is this is what i put in my resume as well so that will be easier okay now if you see i have done some activities based on network segmentation okay that's one of the part of a vapt activity now i did vulnerability based uh, this is automation again i did it's a vapt analysis that i have done so for your job requirement they would be required for a, whether it's a vapt person whether it's a cyber security professional with a, you know sim or whatever it is when you putting in your resume when you put your experience please mention the responsibilities that you handled in that job so even your designation would be application support whether what of the security requirements that you have performed or carried out and those skills you need to mention it that will that will help you out or boost your opportunities to get uh, selected so the course is one thing and when you take a resume as an example right so i'll just yeah here is an experience resume i'll just increase the screen size so that it is visible in these highlights 
and in experience you put your designation you put your job role from how many years you work in below that you mention what is your responsibility in that team and like you did a security activity you mentioned that and in the skills you can mention that as a skill your certification your course and what are the knowledge you have gained that will obviously have a major impact when they're looking at it but if it is a security interview i would definitely recommend you to put the security requirement on the top so for example uh, you might have been working around a lot of security requirement and non security requirement as well so don't start off from the non security requirement put the security requirement at the top then put the remaining so even the course and certifications you might be doing itl certification you have done uh, so you know application support other certifications also put security certification to the top other things at the bottom what happens the relevance of your security uh, experience would always have a higher chance of looking at that when an interviewer is looking at it right he will see your experience first in security then he will look at the other things so uh, one thing is that and also using the right set of keywords so whenever you open the job uh, description you have a certain keyword they would be asking or a certain responsibility that would have been mentioned for example they are looking for a splunk analyst or they are looking for a uh, you know web application pen tester try to use say similar keyword in your resume in your skills you are, if you have worked on it try to use those similar keywords so that you will have a more chance or more visibility on it but you will have a relevant experience for sure and it will be also very very helpful because always in security people with uh, it background is always expected because they don't have to be trained much they will have a very vast knowledge comparing and combining with that a security uh, certification or a core skill definitely will increase your chances and also it's a great asset or a value to the company having a person like you with a lot of years of experience in that role you will be a very good uh, you know uh, import, you know person or a very good in the cyber security professional itself i can say hello i uh, hope that answers your question uh, or you have any other doubt hello hello yes yeah uh, i have one question okay mm -hmm. so most of the interviews i have got this question but i am not able to find the answer of this one so mm -hmm. the question is like when you got since you have also told you have worked on the ransomware and all this part so mm -hmm. when you got a ransomware right so mm -hmm. what are the steps you basically take as an incident response basically when i uh, means mm -hmm. get this question uh, we just get to know means uh, whether means i just give the answer basically uh, regarding to the means what are the step with precautions and all and basically but as mm -hmm. an incident response so what are the step you basically take since okay. you have work on this real time on a ransomware so if you could give a little bit information on that part no okay let me answer this i have not worked on incident response i have worked on resolving these issues for example if the issue was affected to a customer computer or laptop how do i contain how do i mitigate the issue how do i uh, secure the system and i how can i bring it back up so that was my activity so if it is a incident responder as an activity that role if i would have worked definitely i would have answered much better on this but since i have not worked on sim on incident response i can give a precise answer but uh, probably you know i can get some information and get back to you later on this topic but whatever i have worked on my role based on that i can only answer but since i have yes, not sure, worked sure. as an incident responder i just wanted to know mm -hmm. yeah means whatever the means whatever the experience you have with this particular ransom where when this means whatever the task you have done so if you could give that information it will be helpful from from your side okay because this is a task that happened in an it help desk that's the reason i'm saying will that yeah, be yeah, helpful sure. yeah yeah basically see it's a kind of an information so if we get okay, okay. it will be i can also correlate because since i have work on the incident response so i just wanted to know means in terms of the it help desk thing what they are also going to do so it will okay. be a kind of good information okay now uh, so for this again i want to give you a structured answer because if yeah. it is an interview always the interviewer will expect something like a structured answer it's not should be uh, randomly okay so incident right. response plan if i take as an example right there are some steps so when i'm answering this i'll think like this in the mind how to structure my answer but i'm saying like uh, uh, you know uh, trying to bring it in a much more efficient way uh, the answer should be much more precise let me uh, bring that up so you basically work on the containment part and this remediation part right yes yes yeah okay uh, this is one 
it's like detection response mitigation reporting recovery remediation and all those things right 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 okay so if i take this as an incident response plan it's about uh, it's not preparation it's identification okay now there is an alert generated a customer has called this saying that we have a uh, attack that my system is getting all encrypted now that's an identification phase we identified it is connected it's having a ransomware attack second step i'll go for containment so what i'll do in containment i'll ask them to uh, you know make sure that the system is not communicating or network drives are not connected there are external hard drives anything is not connected i told them to you know disconnect even the sim of one drive whatever it is because since i'm working on the system i need the access to that network so we take the ip address will uh, if it is an it inside the company we tell them to disconnect from the other networks or isolate it uh they might have something like a sandbox environment where they can bring in that laptop and connect in the sandbox environment to troubleshoot but if i'm working on remotely i'll try to ensure that all the apps are disconnected and all whatever other things are disconnected except my remote access plan now eradication we have a couple of desktop tools for eradication now eradicating is something like complete doing a wipeout but before doing that we try to recover as many files as possible by using a shadow copy system that is existing or uh, So the shadow volume copy is something like you go for the previous version of the file and you remove the extension you can still get it that used to work long ago five years ago that's how it used to work you get the files and details you take make sure that you have everything safe nothing is affected then you eradication is doing a complete wipe out of the system and reinstalling the os and recovering the uh, files and everything back from the ad account or if they have a google drive or external hard drive bringing the files back on the system then uh learning lesson so once we do it like we have a lessons learned or we do a step by step analysis we do a code that means whenever a customer as such arrives what are the things that we have done whether it's good or not then uh, there is a separate team which will analyze this situation they'll give a proper uh, knowledge base steps to continue or steps to perform in this kind of situation on how to recover it so uh, the incident response plan is always same for all the industries or over the overall the wide industry it's the same applicable but how i do it in my job differs from how they do it in a professional way in a incident response manner agree agree oh hope, hope that i answered your question yeah yeah I means <laughs> it's a kind of a good knowledge i have got because since basically we uh, we start doing this particular uh, this i can say the remediation part and all but for the containment part we basically uh, uh -huh. you know, what are the things we, since this uh, this removing from this particular network and also these are the things we do but mm -hmm. at the end means basically when we give this answer they are not happy with this okay means what apart from this what you want to, you can do so this is mm -hmm. what i wanted to know oh uh, yeah because it depends on company to company if i don't have a sandbox or a quarantine vlan uh, vlan where i can connect the system to troubleshoot then how will i suggest to isolate it i can't right i have right. to unplug the from, right. from the network if they have a quarantine vlan i can just tell, let the it team know that you know move this ip address immediately to quarantine vlan then i can go ahead and troubleshoot but if i can't then it's a major challenge Okay, and, sure. and I think there is another question from Ujwal. Uh, it's like I'm working in a bug bounty and web application pen testing. I'm also a second year student. I want to be a part of Indian Intelligence Bureau. Can you tell me how can I start to learn digital forensics? So for digital forensics, you have various codes uh, that you can learn. You know, Hackivist is also one of the so code providers. They work with a lot of crime investigations, also with the police simultaneously. Uh, they have a very good morale with them. So if you want more information, you can contact Hackivist. They let you know how to uh, how does these things happen in terms of solving crime investigation and using a digital forensics to do those activities. But they would be of very much help, and they have a very much uh, good experience in those areas. And also for these kind of jobs in intelligence bureau and CBI and everything, they'll be putting the job postings. You monitor those job portals. There will be a job posting, and there would be a requirement for it. If you meet those requirements, then you can get into this role. It's not going to be much difficult, but you have to ensure that you meet those requirements because in government jobs, requirement matters. In IT jobs or in private jobs, requirements can be very flexible. But in government jobs, there is no flexibility in terms of requirement. So that's one of the major challenges you might be facing apart from your uh, skill set. It's not like in the movies, right? You know, you have, if you have the skill, you they will bring you and get the job. They might hire you as a consultant, but not as a permanent employee. That's one of the challenge you might have. Okay, and also from uh, Abhishek, there can I upload? Uh, we can upload malicious file in non-ransomware page to check uh, for encrypted file. Uh, okay, this one uh, non-ransomware page to check for encrypted file is like uh, you know. Uh, 
हेलो आई जस्ट एक्चुअली आई वाज एडिंग वन इनपुट इनटू दैट क्वेश्चन ही वाज आस्किंग अबाउट हाउ टू चेक एंड ऑल दैट सो वी हैव अ साइट कॉल्ड इट्स नो मोर रैंसमवेयर सो व्हेनेवर इफ द मशीन गॉट इंफेक्टेड एंड इन दैट जस्ट इज शोइंग ब्लू स्क्रीन एंड आस्किंग फॉर द पिट कॉइंस और इट आस्किंग फॉर द पासवर्ड फॉर द पर्टिकुलर फाइल सो यू कैन try to check try to get that file and uh, check in the in this page uh-huh. so if we can decrypt that uh, file so it will be very easy mm-hmm. so right, right, right. that way or and uh, because isolation is the first option and uh, these are the other precautions we can take it for that kind of attacks yeah sure uh, thank you very much for that information yeah this is one of the things also that we used to try but it never used to work out we never used to able to decrypt so we stop trusting or believing in this pages we directly go for troubleshoot because it will take more time also to decrypt the password and also some most of the time we don't get the answer it's a very well we known ransomware we should try our all best uh. <laughs> yeah yeah because if it is a very well known ransomware it's the same password that has been used earlier then it will be very much helpful but these times they are customizing each and every ransomware so the password you cannot even guess <laughs> yeah this uh, this is a hot topic now because congress and uh, infected yes, yes. yes yesterday topic only and yes, we right. in our in organization also we are discussing about this same thing we are, we are trying to getting all the iocs for that and try to block it for the <laughs> precaution yeah take yeah i see that so that's the reason i said like cyber security is always important for all the companies so no matter which role you are every role is important for in a cyber security and again we have one more question uh, thanks abhishek for bringing that up and uh, there's one more question from yeah. muni i have overall experience in technical and compliance but whenever i give interviews i mostly get technical like web page web page pen testing mobile any suggestions for my case my current role is it auditor hi muni and uh, this is emmanuel here even i am an it security auditor i work for eny uh so i have been from a vapt background and then i got into an auditor role because i just wanted to try a different designation and see how audit and compliance requirements work in hand so if you are interested to go into web penetration and mobile penetration testing i would recommend you to gain those skills uh, do some you know, work around on, on those course and skill set area get any certification relevance of it then you can apply for those roles but if you are getting the job requirement which is not suitable to you better not give it a try because if you get into that role you will have a requirement to do those activities and you might feel difficult to learn it on the go as well so i would recommend you to choose your career very very carefully whether you want to continue into your auditor role itself then well and fine you can customize your job preferences or search preferences to that role but if you are interested to go into pen testing or if one and only if if you want penetration testing try to acquire those skills or else better and, uh, not apply the, yeah sorry uh, if if i get the all that uh, skills and all that but they are organization they are expecting some experience from that if you have worked on that real time project then only they are accepting that resume yeah so, so the solution for that no not a problem at all see when they are asking whether you have worked on anything you have something like a hacker one or a bug bounty program where you can go and still find the vulnerabilities or you can still find out the bugs and you have something like a ca- uh, hack the flag uh, ctf capture the flag okay this is also one of the areas you have a skill set you go this uh, to these websites where you can go out and do a practical activity where you can showcase i have found a bug in so and so or i have done the capture the flag activity i have hacked the box activity i have done so this is like experience itself which is showcasing your real time work or uh, uh, you know efficiency that you have worked on these areas what happens is this sometimes they might be hesitating to take you because you are from a different background what will happen if they hire you whether you will be able to cope up with the job or not whether do you have any experience or not so in linkedin recently i received from one of the students some of the students to get the job what they did was i think they are from soc experts uh what did it is once again the skills right they made a five page report about how did they find a bug or how did they do the caps at the flag activity they made a five page report and they uploaded if you feel that they are not looking at your uh, you know current skill set and you are losing job opportunity if you want to get into it try to do or pick any of these activities and do a five two to three page report at least and you put it in your resume or link you can create in your uh, you can put it in your linkedin and you put a link inside that you can tell them that you have worked on it so what happens is this in these scenarios they will test your experience in real time they'll ask you question like tell me how did you do it how did you approach what tools did you use how did you find this bug where did you find it 
uh, did you uh, write any scripts or did you write any exploit you can expect these kind of questions so if you have worked practically i can definitely assure that you will answer more confidently on this and you will have a very good chance in getting the job okay thank you uh, yeah. well thanks for the knowledge uh, may i know what are the certifications do you remain for the web pen testing uh, uh web pen testing testing i am saying like certifications you might have many but it depends on the skill so skill is what you should be more focused on and next the certification so if if i say certification yeah. right you can get ces yeah. for a basic level and osap for a little bit intermediate level but the skill is what matters the most because uh, i have seen people with some of them uh, osap certifications or were still enrolling for a lot of trainings because they think that sometimes that knowledge is absolute it's been many you know for four to five years in the industry it's a lot of changes happened so they're not up to the date what happens is that i would request you to go through the skill like uh, if you take hacktivist for example right we are not doing any course focused on a certification we are giving courses based on the skill set so if you are interested in a web application penetration testing and bug bounty there is separate course for it if you are interested in android it's separate course for it so you acquire these skills then you can more confidently resolve the certification exams because osap and all is a practical exam it's not a theoretical like uh, in ceh you have a little bit of theory and practical now for ceh v10 uh, you have lot of questions to objectives that you have to answer and some of the things you might have to practically do but osap is more of a practically based question because if you lose in it you will lose the money as well you will lose a chance of getting certification also so it's very very uh, you know complicated scenario where if you're going for certification you have to get all the skills that is required for it you practice it Uh, and then you go for the certification exam then you will be able to clear it but if you are directly going for certification you can pick from uh, ceh it's easier to clear osap is a difficult to clear but has more value whichever is difficult has more value thank you okay now they are saying like hello how can we find internship opportunity in web application security okay devendra has asked a question internship opportunities used to grow a lot earlier so there are a lot of companies who will hire interns for a period of time okay this you can expect in two scenarios company has a lot of projects but they don't have a lot of skill set uh, so they hire internships for a period of time 2 to 3 months 6 months who are have the skill set some of the companies will try to hire internships as a company policy they have to hire interns uh, for a period of time like uh, bigger companies will always give opportunity for internships and then they will as a job placement also if they like some candidate they will place it so you can find internships in uh, different apps in nokri also there are a lot of internship opportunities you get in linkedin also you might find internship opportunities so i think last time when i was in college five years ago internship shala or something was there for internships now you have lot of other uh, websites nokri also linkedin also where you can still find internship opportunities uh, so in you have a student in canada right so in canada i think yeah there's a company policy that they will offer internship opportunities for students you can use i think indeed is most used over there i'm not sure indeed or shine uh, so if you if it is that's the website you can try to find internship opportunity but even to get inside a internship opportunity you have to show the skill set without showing the skill set probably they might not give the opportunity as i said uh, one thing is a skill set skill skill set does mean that you have to have a course or you need to have a knowledge about it uh you can gain for go for a certification or if you don't want to go to certification you have to do some practical work or showcase your experience so people you might be seeing in linkedin they're showcasing your hacker rank hacker one rank or bug bounty ranking or uh, the activities they done in the capture the flag hack the box a lot of these activities would be going around uh, hackathons would be going around so if you have participated in any such activities right you make a report of at least 2 to 3 pages and send it to the internship opportunity as well i i humbly suggest you this i am also requesting you when you are a fresher or when you are changing a profession it's better to do a small report and showcase your skill much better so there is something called a percentage of the likeliness to get a job the likeliness the likelihood to get a job depends on how well you have built your skills and showcased it for example i have a lot of skills i have lot of knowledge if i am not able to represent in my resume and i am not able to showcase to the interviewer definitely i will not get a job and uh, if you have the skill set put it in the right way create a proper uh, report because it will show your dedication your quality of work your interest in that skill set and also how well and thorough you are in it and then you send that resume and your report also attached the chances of getting hired he is much more higher to compare somebody who sends a normal resume hope you get my point so the more you work on yourself and work on your profile and how to get a job that increases your chances of getting hired okay. 
okay any special resume for internship i have experience of networking in india and but now learning web security no there is no special resume required for internship as i said it's a resume for fresher itself which you can use you can put your resume, experience of networking and also web security which is very very good you can put it across as a fresher resume itself which i have showcased right here uh, there is no need to uh, create a separate resume for internship you can go for that but any other activities that you have done any major uh, like a bug bone hunting you have done you found a bug you have had a cv id on your own it's better to mention that it's better to send that report so nowadays people are coming with this kind of attitude like you send a report along with your resume uh, that will give uh, an employer a confidence that you know what you're doing and they probably pick the questions from that and you can able to answer it much easier uh, anything other than this uh, because we're gonna wrap up in three minutes anybody else have any questions uh hope i nobody has any questions but just in case if anybody has any questions in future uh, and you want to get back to us feel free to reach us uh, this is our whatsapp number it's a group and uh, these are course details and modules that we have and uh, these are trainers and yeah for certification which one is good to start with okay people who are very keen on certification uh, if you want to have a very easy completion of certification you want to clear a basic certification go for a ceh it's a basic certification it's an easy certification again if you have a ceh doesn't mean that you have all the skill set they will ask a lot of questions out of ceh so make sure you acquire those skills and then get certified if you want a tougher certification which gives you more value more weightage go for oscp as advanced certification i can say gives you more value and more boost to your profile and again if it doesn't mean that you have OSCP, that uh, you have all the skills, they would test you. They would test you for sure whether you are OSCP certified properly or CA certified because nowadays there are like boot camps, people getting proxies to clear the certification because of going around things like these, people are very much interested to test you before they hire you, whether you are a certified professional, okay, fine, but how well you know thoroughly about the domain which you have worked on so these things you have to keep in mind now it's time is gone people can't fool around easily and to get a job they have to prove their skill set they have to prove themselves in the interview few people even give you code to uh, they give a requirement to go a hack or they will give a website for you to find a bug so you have to show your skill how, how far will you go in finding a bug what are the steps you have taken even that you have to showcase that's how you can be a professional uh, that's it i can say about this uh, this question as, as such have skill set then certification then showcase what you have done with your skill whether you have done some activity or find a bug or hack the flag or uh, hack the box whatever it is there put it uh, put a simple report of two to three pages then do it uh, so anything else okay since i have not received any questions that's it for today thank you for everyone for joining the course thank you for joining us and letting us know but if you have any job opportunities please do let us know we will put it in our group so that Anybody who's looking for opportunities could help them. So it's about helping one another and growing together. That's what we believe in. So, so that if in case in future you have any job requirement or job uh, that your company is looking for, we will provide you the referrals as well. But it's like you are helping somebody to get a job. So people who are trained with us, having those skill set and certifications that you are looking for, we might have those people in touch with us. And uh, we can help each other in getting you the jobs and uh, meeting those requirements as well so stay in touch uh, let us help each other if you have any jobs people who are online uh, right now connected to us if you have any jobs in your company do let us know and people who are looking for job do let us know so that we can bring these people together and uh, we can help each other thank you very much thank you everybody for joining today uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions to me you can contact me through linkedin uh, or you can reach to hacktivist and you can drop a message to me about my uh, daily, you know, uh, the training that we have provided today so that if you have any concerns or queries, I can improvise in future and get back to you on those queries. Thank you all. Have a nice day. And be safe. <laughs>